now it is <laughs> All right. Everybody okay with that? So we've taken a look at a policy-based VPN. My objective today is to introduce another type of VPN, which is called a routing based VPN. What ha what will happen if we have an, any any ACL? That's a problem uh, over here. It will work, but the issue with will, will be generally when you have a router it also has traffic that's going towards what? The internet. You don't want that traffic to go through the, the VPN. You want that traffic to go directly. The only thing that you need to go from VPN is X to Y. Understood? So again, as a recap, the VPN that we did yesterday was a policy-based VPN. The reason it was a policy-based VPN is because you were defining the interesting traffic based on an ACL. So in this environment, the environment that I just showed you where you had multiple networks, it would not be feasible or scalable to be able to do that. So what's the alternative to that? The alternative to that is be able to run a routing protocol between the two devices that too you could put a deny at the top of there but uh, even with that the internet traffic going uh, the traffic going the internet will still be an issue you can create an acl with permit ip any any but a deny at the top that de uh, denies traffic going from host to host but even then it's not the way to do it because these routers are also connecting to the internet. So to do that, I want to be able to run a routing instance between my LA router and my New York router so that I can learn about the new networks that are getting added in the remote side to my VPN. Can I run a routing protocol from LA to New York over the internet to route my private networks? These, no, don't forget, these are private networks. GRE, right? What's the problem with GRE? GRE will allow you the ability to do that, but it's a clear text protocol. It will allow you the ability to do it, but it's a clear text protocol. Why didn't I run IPsec? See, I have a, a connection between LA to New York. It is a VPN. I have a VPN from LA to New York. I am connecting them up. Why don't I run a routing protocol from LA to New York with IPsec? Why do I need a GRE? What's the difference between GRE and IPsec that forces me to use GRE for this routing portion? What allows multicast? How about IPsec? No? I'll show you today, IPsec does support multicast. IPsec has no issues with multicast. 
The problem over here between GRE and IPsec, the difference between GRE and IPsec, the way I defined the VPN between LA to New York was by using a policy. Correct? Did I have an interface that connected LA and New York as if they're directly connected to each other? Did I have a direct connect between LA and New York so that I could run a routing protocol between the two? Because in order to run a routing protocol, it requires, the IGP requires that two routers should be directly connected. So although I'm doing a VPN, I'm accomplishing that by doing it through a tunnel, through that encapsulation, but not an interface. I don't have a logical interface that connects LA to New York. And that's what GRE allows us the ability to do. The way a GRE tunnel is established is by using a logical interface that simulates as if LA and New York are directly connected to each other. So what I'm gonna do over here on our, in LA, I'll create a tunnel interface. I'm gonna tell the tunnel, hey, listen, this tunnel starts. Anything that goes over the tunnel will start from my public address. Let's say the public address in LA is 192.1.10.0. Let's say this is dot one. And this is 20.0. And let's say this is dot two. So I'll say my tunnel source in LA is 192.1.10.1. And tunnel destination is 192.1.20.2. So any traffic that goes over the tunnel will be encapsulated with the outer header being what? And then I'm gonna take whatever goes over the tunnel and encapsulate it. But at the same time, the tunnel will also have its own IP address. This tunnel by default is a GRE tunnel. The protocol it uses is GRE, and it's a point-to-point -point tunnel. So it can only have one, endpoint so ip address let's say 192 168 we'll call it 12 dot one so now this network this logical network between r1 and r2 or la and new york will be what 12.0 this becomes dot one this becomes dot two so logically speaking, I have connected LA and New York as if they are directly connected to each other. Now, if they're directly connected to each other, they both are on the 192.168 network. Now I can run a routing protocol because now LA and New York are directly connected. Whereas in IPsec, I did not have a tunnel interface connecting LA and New York. Do you understand that? So that's the reason that I would be able to run a routing protocol over here is because I actually have a logical interface which connects, logical, virtual interface that connects LA and New York as if they're directly connected to each other. What is it, 192.168.12.1 network? Basically what I'm doing is, I'm creating a logical link between what? Router one and router two, which are located in LA and New York, they're both connected to the internet using their physical interfaces. Their physical, their public IP addresses are 192.1.10.0. On this particular network, this is dot one. And over here on the 20 network, this guy's dot two. Got it so far? But what I want to do is I want to logically connect up R1 and R2 to each other. So I create a new interface, which is a logical interface, as if R1 and R2 are on the same directly connected interface. And that IP address of that network 
that logical network that connects the two to each other is 192, 160, whatever you want to keep it. I kept it as 12. So this becomes dot one on the 12 network. This becomes dot two on that network. This tunnel interface, any traffic that needs to go over the tunnel, it cannot go using 192, 168, fall down, whatever. It's going to be encapsulated with this as the outer header source. This has the destination, which is 20.2. So it's going to be encapsulated, sent across. Good so far? What's the advantage of doing this? The advantage now is because logically speaking, router one now is connected to router two over what? Directly connected to each other on the 12 network dot one dot two. I can now run what? Routing between R1 and R2. So we solve the reachability issue. Can we encrypt GRE tunnel with IPsec? We'll get to that one. Absolutely can. But my first objective is to make sure I can run routing between R1 and R2. And the way I accomplish that is by creating this logical interface that connects R1 and R2. Now I do have an interface that is logically connecting the two to each other so they can form absolutely a routing adjacency with each other good so far everybody okay with this now today what i'm going to do to do the labs is i'm going to use gns Logically, directly connected. That is correct. I'm going to use GNS today. The only reason I'm using GNS today is so that I can show you Wireshark of this packet. Okay. So this is the topology that I want to create over here. What I'm going to be doing in this particular topology, let me uh, take a snip of it. Somebody's video is on. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a snip of this diagram. So we can write on it, save as, let's say GRE point to point, day two. Get up now. All right. So this becomes my internet router in the middle. All right. This is simulating the internet. This is going to be my public address. Let's put a public address of 10.0 over here. This is going to be my public address over here, 20.0. And behind R1, I'm going to create some loopback addresses, which are going to be simulating my internal networks. Let's create two of them. Apart from logical interfaces, when, you would, you, when would you use GRE over IPsec? That's the only reason. The other reason I would do it if it's multi-point. Right now, still point to point. Later on, we'll talk about multi point. That's where GRE becomes more important because IPsec predominantly is point to point. We'll do this as 10 3. You guys understand the topology over here so far? So let's go ahead and configure it because I haven't configured them. Routers are blank right now. Nothing on it. This is my internet router. And this is my router three. All of them are blank. So I'm going to be configuring them from scratch. So router one, F00 is the one that connects up to router two. We agreed on 10.1 as the address. 
We said we have a couple loopbacks, 10.1.1.1. And we'll say I have another loopback, 172.16.1.1. Good so far, guys. Everybody okay with this? I will also put up a default gateway so I can reach the internet. And my internet over here is 10.2, router two. Let's go to router two. On router two, if you look at your topology, there's not a lot that I need to do. I have two interfaces, one connecting towards R1, 10.2 is what I'm gonna give it the IP address. This is the public site. NF01, which is going to be 20.2. Generally, the internet router would run some form of BGP, so it, it exchanges the routes with the other ISPs. In my case, it's basically simple. As long as R1 can reach R3, that's all I'm concerned about with this particular router. So I have 10.2 and 22. At this point, I should be able to ping 10.1. From R2, I can ping R1. And R3, the public address, 192.1.20.3. My internal networks, I'll say are 10.3. And 172.16.33. I will also put a default gateway. towards 20.2, which is R2. Can I ping my default gateway? Can I ping the other side, 10.1? No problems. So let's say this is my Los Angeles network. Choose a different color. And this is my New York network. Everybody okay with this so far? You guys understand what I've done? Good. Now, I want to connect my private networks to each other to the internet. How do I create this tunnel? I'll go to router one. I create this logical interface called a tunnel interface. Any number, you can have 2 billion tunnels if you want. Pick a number, locally significant. So you can put any number you want. This tunnel, that I'm creating is going to be created from where to where. This tunnel will start from R2, R1, sorry, and it will terminate where? On R2. Okay, and it'll logically connect them as if what? They are directly connected. And this one, I'll give it a network address of 192, 168, let's say 13.0. Okay, this tunnel starts at 10.1, ends at 30.3. So the way I create this tunnel, very simple, interface tunnel one, tunnel source, 192.1.10.1, tunnel destination, 20.3. Good, as long as I have reachability to 20.3 in my routing table, which I do because of the default gateway, it is gonna bring the tunnel up. This tunnel that came up, show interface tunnel. One, let's take a look at some characteristics that I want you guys to be aware of. The tunnel protocol over here is what? GRE, so the default tunnel protocol when you create the tunnel is GRE. It's actually GRE point to point. So it's, it can only have one destination. So it's from R1 to R3 in our case, one destination you cannot have multiple destination, a single destination over here. That's one. It shows you any packet that goes through it will have a source of what? N1 and a destination of 
the IP address of this particular tunnel. It doesn't list it over here because it's the interface. But if you do show IP interface brief, it'll show you the IP address. I didn't give it, that's why. I want to assign it an IP address of 192.168.13.1. So need to specify the tunnel mode? No, the default mode is GRE point to point. So show interface tunnel one. There you go, the internet IP address is 13.1. So that's that 13.1. Any packet going through the tunnel, We'll have a tunnel source of this, tunnel destination of that. Good so far? So let me write this down in your notes. Configuring a GRE tunnel interface to connect R1 to R3, basically LA to New York. R1, which I'm saying is LA. And it doesn't matter which order you put the things in, as long as all of them are in in place, it's okay. What do I do on R3, which is New York? Can this be tunnel three? Any IP, it doesn't matter. This tunnel address is locally significant. Somebody asked me a question, why didn't I give it uh, 13 dot whatever, 31 dot whatever. It doesn't really matter. Oh, why, you mean 31 or 13 dot one? It's just a number that I picked. What do you mean by, why didn't I give it 31? I can pick any address. It's like saying, why didn't you give 10 by 10 to the inside address? It's up to you. R3, I haven't done yet. I've just done R1 right now. Okay, now I'm doing R3. Over here, I need to be on the same network, have to be on the same network. Just like if I have two devices on the same network, they need to be sharing the same network address, but a different host address. You guys understand that? So it is on the same network, different IP. Got it, Idris? Donald Source. Absolutely, because they're directly connected to each other. And so generally, you don't even do a 255, 255, 255.0, you do 252. Why? You want to have what? Slash 31, slash 32 type of thing. Keep it simple. I don't want you guys to get confused with that. 13.1 and 13.2 is good enough. But yes, you can do a slash 30, slash 31. Doesn't matter as long as they're on the same network. Tunnel source over here. What do I put the tunnel source over here on R3? The public address of R3. And another thing that you can do is if you don't know the address, you can even do this. When you say E00, which is your outside interface, it'll pick the IP address from there. But the tunnel destination, you need to specify because it's a remote destination. So this, I need to put it manually. But the interface, the local address, you can either do it like this. This is fine, or you can do it like that. This is also fine. Clear? It's a primary IP address if you have multiple IP addresses on that interface.
generally you only have one IP, but if you have secondary addresses, it'll pick the, the primary address, the main address. So I'll copy this onto where? Onto R3 and paste it. It is F over here. No, it has to be an address. Oh yeah, now they've actually, take that back. You need to, as long as it can, you can resolve it, you have a DNS server, you can do it. Good so far? Now let's go back and check some things over here. I want you guys to see how it works now. If I do show IP route over here, correct. On one side, you can, uh, yeah, I, I actually you can do it on both sides. It'll give you the ability to have, as long as you have dynamic DNS that resolves, uh, registers your dynamic IP, you have the ability to do that. As long as you have Dyn DNS type of setup in your environment. Now, if I do show IP route over here, I want you guys to take a look at something. I have a, I should have a new network over here. It didn't come up, why not? Tunnel source is there and tunnel destination was not there for some reason. I thought I put it in. Okay. Show IP route. I want you guys to take a look at the routing table now. Notice there's a new route over here. 13.0 through the what interface? Tunnel interface. So basically now this diagram that I'm, I showed you over here is there. On router three or router one, I have my inside interfaces, I have my physical interface, and I have my tunnel interface. Everybody good with this so far? Now let's take a look at a packet flow over here. I'm gonna go to router one. Show IP route. And I'm gonna type in thing 192.168.13.3. What happens in this type of setup, it says, oh, 13.3. I need to check my routing table. Can I go to 13.3? What do you think? Is there an entry for 13.3? Where is it? Right over here, right? Directly connected through the tunnel. So if it's directly connected on this, when it creates a source and destination IP, the destination I typed in was 192.168.13.3. What is the source going to be? Because it's a locally connected interface, the outgoing interface is tunnel one. It goes and picks the IP address from the the tunnel IP. What is a tunnel IP over here, guys? That becomes the source of that packet. So because it says tunnel one, it will say that the source address is this guy. Puts it into the packet. Good so far, guys? Now it's done with that. It now needs to route the packet. What did the routing tell it? What did the routing table tell it? If you want to get to what? The 13 network that this address belongs to, go through the tunnel. Now, anything that is sent through the tunnel, anything that is sent to the, through the tunnel, it's a point-to-point -point tunnel, that it has been defined. Anything that goes through the tunnel should be encapsulated automatically using what addresses? The source should be what? 10.1, destination should be 20.3. No, source should be the public address, encapsulated. That 13.1, 13.3 I've done, now I need to forward the packet. 
it says go through tunnel one. Tunnel one says it's a GRE tunnel, and it should have an encapsulation based on that. So it's going to put the source as 10.1, destination as 20.3 based on this. Good. And forwards the packet over here. What part of the packet does R2 look at? The red or the blue? The red one. Does R2 know about 20 network? It's a public network. Yeah, it's connected to what? This interface forwards it over here. In on the internet, this would be a public address with BGP would have told it how to reach from LA to New York. Either way, it's a public address. The ISP should know how to route it. And eventually the packet will reach New York. What does New York do with it? Strips out the outer header. Says, oh, somebody's trying to ping 13.3. That's my address. Ping is successful. And the response, again, does the same thing. So to recap, what is the process over here? When I did a ping over here, 192.168.13.3, it checks your routing table. In the routing table, what does it figure out? This destination is directly connected to what? To tunnel. So first thing it does, it creates that inner header, which has 192.168.13.1 as a source. Destination is 13.3 because that's what I'm pinging. Now, because it's going through the tunnel, it checks the tunnel characteristics and says, I need to encapsulate it and put this header. Every packet that goes through the tunnel will go through this process. Checks the routing table and then checks the next, the destination, and the destination is based on this. This is a VPN. Why I'm going through a from a private to private over a public network. What protocol did I use to set this up? GRE. It is a VPN. But the problem with GRE is it, it is clear text. Its main objective is just to encapsulate. Put a packet within another packet. It does not secure it. It does not, does not encrypt it. OK? No, it's open standard. Well, I'm not doing IPsec right now, am I? We'll get to the point. We'll cross that bridge when we get there. This is GRE. And GRE is it's, its own protocol. Good so far, guys? Now, the good thing about this is I can the reason I did this in GNS is because I could run Wireshark over here. So now what I can do over here is, where the hell did it go? OK, what I can do over here now is I can go down here and send a ping to 13.3. And you will notice that ping request just came through. I need to see. The packet details over here. This is the packet that I just opened up. You take a look at this packet. It has multiple headers. It has the outer header, which is 10.1 to 20.3. 20 this is the GRE header. Then I have an inside packet, which is 192.168.13.1 to 13.3. I can actually see that inside that 
IP, the inside header, the ICMP header, is the actual ICMP packet. And if you want to see what, when you do a ping on a Cisco router, what does your data look like? It's a bunch of garbage over here. You can actually check it. It is a 30, uh, 72 byte header, 0000 CE6464 ABCD, ABCD, ABCD. That's what it sends when you send a ping. But I can see it. I can actually see the data. I can see that it's an outer header or what? 10.1 to 20.3 and the inside header is this guy. It's clear text. Good so far, guys? Everybody okay with this? All right, now, where the hell did this come from? I don't need this. Okay, my objective over here was not to connect LA to New York. My objective was to connect the networks behind LA to the networks behind New York. So I still need to run a routing protocol over here. How do I run a routing protocol now? Very simple. I'll go to router one. What are my networks over here? I'm not going to run my routing protocol with my ISP. I'm not going to run it on my public network. I want to run routing between what? My private networks and on my tunnel. So pick a routing protocol, any IGP. Let's say router EIGRP. I'll pick that because it's something that comes up quick. No auto summary. Network 192.168.13.0. Network. 10.0.0.0 and network 172.16.0.0. So now I'm running routing from where? From R1 to R3 through the tunnel. When I create this packet and I've typed in the network command 192.168.13.0, what does it do? It enables EIGRP on the tunnel interface. Agreed? Well, that basically means I need to send an update over the tunnel interface. What's the tunnel source IP? Over here on R1. Tunnel source. 192, no, not, not the public. I'm not running it on the public. I'm running it on the tunnel. 192, 168, 30, 1. And when EIGRP sends an update, what does the EIGRP packet have a destination address as normally EIGRP. It sends it to a multicast address of 224.0.0.10. And then it will have the EIGRP data, the updates. But it's on the tunnel interface. So what did I tell you? Any packet that goes over the tunnel interface needs to have what? The outer header as and one going towards 20.3 because I enabled it on the tunnel interface 192.168 13.0. So it's going to forward that as a unicast packet where the multicast packet is encapsulated. He gets it. So I can now run what? EIGRP over this tunnel interface. What's the protocol I'm running? This is a GRE packet. And this is your. EIGRP packet. Good. Let's take a look, see if it works. So I did it on what? One side, let's do it on the other. Router EIGRP, same AS number. Guess what? My neighbor is up with whom? Who's my neighbor? 13.1 over the tunnel network. So that means my EIGRP updates are going across. Understood? And what does the EIGRP packet look like over here? So now I'm going to say run the routing protocol over the tunnel. On R1, router EIGRP 100, no auto summary. 
network is 13.0, 10.0, and I need to do the same thing for R3. Good so far, guys. Everybody okay with this? Tell me what the EHRP packet looks like right now when the EHRP packets go, goes across. It's going to have an outer header. It's going to be a GRE header. And a one going towards what? 20.3. Then it's going to be an EHRP packet, which will have the source address as the tunnel IP, destination address as, and the EHRP data. Agreed? You guys want to see this packet? That's why I ran my sniff. Let's pick a packet over here. This is the EHRP hello packet. It has a source of 20, uh, 10.1. Destination 20.3. And then the inside header, which is the EHRP header, has what? 13.1 going towards what? 224.0010, which is EHRP's address. This is your EHRP packet, which shows you what autonomous system it's running. It's just a hello packet, so it's going to just have basic stuff over here. Nothing major, the K values, maybe a hello dead interval type of thing, hold down time. This is the EHRP software version they're running, so on and so forth. This is your normal EHRP hello packet. Good so far, guys? Everybody okay with this? All right, now, I want you to use this as an example. What was the size of this packet? You see this EHRP hello packet? What's the size? Because I'm going to use this size as a gauge as you move from EHRP to the other things, how this packet changes. See this packet size has 98 bytes. See this 98 is the length. So all the hello packets have what? 98 bytes. We'll use that as a reference point. So what did you find out over here is that EIGRP packet, I'll make it more specific, hello packet, because it's going to be the same packet that I'm going to be checking, which is sent every five seconds, has a size of 98 bytes. Good so far, guys? What's the drawback over here? The drawback over here is, is this packet is completely in the open. Did I see what the packet looked like? Yes, I, could, I showed you the entire packet, didn't I? Everything is there. So somebody is sniffing the packet. Yes, it is encapsulated. It's got an IP header on the outside, IP header on the inside, but I can see the entire content. It's clear text. Right? So why is that an issue? Because I'm going over a public network. I want to protect this. And that's where I would want to take this GRE packet that has its own header. And then it has the EHRP packet. In this case, ping, whatever the inside header is, and data, take this entire packet and encrypt it in my ESP header, which will have its own source and destination. I'm going to encrypt it. So I'm going to put a third header on it. So I'm going to have ESP, GRE, and EHRP is already there. 
allowing me the ability to encrypt this entire packet. So this way I can get my routing in place, plus I can encrypt it. This is known as GRE over IPsec. where I take a GRE packet, run it over an IPsec header, encrypting it. Do you guys understand that? Why don't I just run IPsec like I did with the LAN to LAN? The reason is I could not run routing. I needed an interface. So once I got the interface with GRE, now I can encrypt that traffic. Anything that goes over that tunnel interface, I'll encrypt it using what? IP set. You get my point. So I'm taking the disadvantage that I had over here. What was my disadvantage over here? With pure IP sec. No direct connection. So the drawback of this type of VPN is it's not scalable or dynamic, no routing. Now I got routing going, but now I don't have security. So the, to combine the two, I'm going to run GRE over IPsec. This packet is encapsulated, allowing a private network to be propagated over the internet. The drawback is what? Before I go into that, this will allow routing. Why will it allow routing? As you have a logical direct connection between the two endpoints. The drawback is that it does not, it is, well, that it is clear text. IPsec over GRE is different. It's where you take a, uh, what do you call it? IPsec packet and send it through GRE. Nowadays, nobody does that. That's a very old technology. Even what I'm doing right now, it's not done anymore, but I'm explaining it because I want you guys to see the progression. What you're talking about, IPsec over GRE, is I would put a crypto map on the tunnel interface. That's a very old technology. Okay, so the drawback that is clear text. So how do I get around that? So now I'm going to do what? GRE over IPsec. It will take the GRE packet. It will take any packet actually, leaving the tunnel interface, which is basically in our case going to be a GRE packet, and encrypt it. Absolutely, it's going to add headers, and as I go through it, you'll see what are the different things that you can do to make it a little better. But at the end of the day, you will always have that extra header, so you might want to change your MTU size. We'll take a look at that. Let's go through this. You'll see that. So I'll take any packet leaving the tunnel interface, GRE packet, in our case, and encrypt it. Good so far? Now, one second, guys. I have an important call coming up. Give me one minute, huh? Take a short two-minute break. Uh, five. Let's make a five-minute break.
Sorry, guys. Production network call. Had to take it. So it will take the packet leaving the tunnel interface and encrypt it using IPsec. Now let's go back to yesterday. What did we talk about in terms of IPsec? When I need to do IPsec, what are the things that I need to do? What are my steps? Do you guys remember? Step one. Phase one. Step two. Phase two, which is your transform set, right? Then the third step was interesting traffic ACL. What did I tell you over here, guys? I won't have that. My routing will take care of it. I don't need that. Step four was my crypto map. I'll explain how I get around the crypto map over here. And step five was apply. Do you guys remember that? Remember these five steps from yesterday for IPsec? Now what I need to do is encrypt this traffic. So I need to bring in IPsec again. With confidence, let's do one and two. Because we know them, right? From yesterday. If you look at your diagram over here. On R1, who's my destination? My public side on the other side, what is that address? On R1 in Los Angeles, what's my destination IP address? 20.3, right? Correct? So let's do that over here. On R1, step one. Configure phase one. Crypto ISACAMP policy 10. Auth three share. Encryption triple des. Hash, let's say MD5. Group, let's say two. And my pre shared key. For the tunnel destination, who's my destination over here? R3. Everybody okay with this so far? My objective is to take that tunnel interface and encrypt it. Done? Step two. Configure phase two. Agreed? Everybody okay with this? So far. Step three, I don't need an ACL because my routing will take care of it. Right? So what happens over here, as I explained to you, if you take a look at this packet now, let's go to router one, show IP route. I should have shown you the routing table earlier on as well because I would have learned what? And three via what? Panel one, do you see that? So if I sit over here and I type in ping 10.3.3.3, Let's say my source I specify is 10.1.1.1. This packet gets created. Source, destination, checks what? Right now it's checking the tunnel interface, sees what? In the routing, go through tunnel one, right? Because my destination is in my routing table through the tunnel-based routing that I set up. 
And tunnel one, when it goes and explores tunnel one, it has a tunnel source of what? A public address. Tunnel destination is 20.3, and I create the packet over here. Normally, this is the way it's happening, right? Everybody follow this so far? Okay. Now, when I introduce IP second to it, it still does this part. It still says, oh, I need to go through the, the tunnel. So routing does take place as is. So routing will force the traffic towards what? The tunnel. Now, anything that hits the tunnel, I need to encrypt it. Normally, when I have the exit interface in IPsec, what did I apply to the exit interface in normal IPsec? Routing will replace the ACL to force the traffic that needs to be encrypted to the exit interface. Now, when I had the normal IPsec, I, what did I put on the exit interface to specify whether I want to encrypt it, what transform set to use, and all that? Crypto map, right? What was the purpose of the crypto map? Do you guys remember the three commands within the crypto map? Help me out with them from yesterday. What was inside the crypto map? It had the ACL, it had the set peer. All right. And it had what? The transform. Phase two parameters, right? Aren't these the three parameters yesterday that I put inside the crypto map? Okay, do I need an ACL over here? Do I need the set here? I'm already under the tunnel destination. The tunnel already has a destination, no need to set the peer. What's the only thing that I need? The transform set. So I need to find a way. Crypto map will not work. Why? Crypto map requires these three. It requires these three to be there. So the crypto map will not work. What they did was they came up with a mechanism called the IPsec profile. Configure an IPsec profile and attach the transform set to it. So I'll create a crypto IPsec profile, call it whatever you want to, I'll call it iProf, and I'll call my transform set called PSET in it. So what does the IPsec profile iProf contain? The pointer towards my transform set. Everybody okay with this so far? Why do I need it? Because I need to apply it to my outgoing interface. And what is my outgoing interface? My outgoing interface over here is my tunnel interface. Apply the IPsec profile to the tunnel interface. This will specify that any traffic leaving the tunnel should be encrypted using IPsec and the transform set is basically inside the profile. So the way I do this is under the tunnel interface, I'll say tunnel protection using the IPsec profile called IProf. Protect the tunnel, encrypt the tunnel using the IPsec profile called IProf. It is basically a replacement of your crypto map. Again, what did the crypto map have?
What are the parameters inside the crypto map? Peer, ACL, and transform set. Now over here with the tunnel based, I don't need the peer because the tunnel destination is my peer. I don't need an ACL because my routing table, it's a routing based VPN, the routing will force the traffic into the tunnel. And as I said, any traffic leaving the tunnel should be encrypted. So the only parameter that I need is the, the transform set. That's what I call inside the profile and I attach the profile to the tunnel interface. Now, any traffic leaving the tunnel interface will be encrypted by using these parameters. You get my point? That's it. I'm done. I don't need to worry about any ACL or any of the, uh, what do you call it? Set peer commands because my tunnel is already there. So I'll just copy this and paste it to R1. What's gonna happen when I paste it to R1? My network, my tunnel network will come down. How come? I'm encrypting it, the other guy is not. My EIGRP neighbor relationship will come down. All right, how do I fix it? On R3, same thing, just point towards what? R1, the rest is exactly the same. I don't need to change anything else. Take a look, tell me if I need to change anything. Just the peer address in the ICCM key, the rest is already configured. Let's paste it and see what happens. Oops, you're right. and the neighbor is up. So any packet that is going through the tunnel now is getting encrypted. This is GRE over IPsec. Before I show you the packets and the encryptions and all, let's go back to this packet and EIGRP packet. Tell me what does it do to the header over here? What does this packet now look like? This was the EIGRP packet earlier on, which had GRE and EIGRP, right? When I add ESP to it, the IPsec portion of it, this packet now will have an ESP header. The ESP header, the IPsec header, it basically takes the tunnel source and tunnel destination from the tunnel interface and copies it. So now I'll have a duplication of what? of that header. So this is what the packet will look like. So what have I done now? I have three headers. What are my three headers? This guy, which is exactly the same over here. Why? When I put the tunnel protection under the tunnel interface, it takes basically takes the IP address, tunnel source, and tunnel destination, and creates the outer header over here. So it's a replica. So this packet over here will have three headers now. Some of you guys had the issue about the packet being bigger. Now it's even bigger. So this becomes the header, the IPsec header that you add up. It's about 52 bytes. So this packet, which was 98 bytes, you guys remember this? I'm gonna add another 52 bytes to it. It becomes a 
150 byte header. Let's go back to my sniff over here. Notice the, I'm not doing anything. There's only one packet that's consistently coming in. What is that packet? It's an ESP packet with 150. 150 is the size, right? What is this 150? This is your EIGRP hello packet, the only packet that's getting sent. If I open this packet up now, it shows you the outer header as 20.3 to 10.1. Guess what? After that, this says an ESP header, no GRE, nothing. It's all encrypted. This is the SPI. If, if you check the SPI, this is the, the key, the, S, uh, the session key that was used to encrypt it. This should match your session key on the router. Bunch of sixes, CF6. Just check that. See this? So it's encrypting the package. You're not seeing the GRE header or the EIGRP header because the entire thing is encrypted now. But you can see the packet is a bigger packet now. It is bigger by what size? 52 bytes. That's the extra header that EI, uh, sorry, uh, IPsec puts on top of the packet. Good so far, guys? Encapsulation type meaning? You mean the layer two? That would, yeah, it depends on your ESP header, yeah. How big your encryption schemes are. Correct. Not encapsulation, it would be your encryption scheme. Everybody okay with this? You understand that? Is this a good thing or a bad thing? It's a good thing in the sense now my data is encrypted. You guys can, cannot see the data anymore. What's the bad part about it? The packet is bigger now. Isn't it? I have three headers over here. And it's not just three headers, there's duplications. Take a look at this. So every packet will have this extra 52 bytes. The 98 bytes is just something that I use as a constant because I'm just picking a packet that doesn't change. So that's why the 98 bytes are there. But the 52 bytes, every single packet that you'll have for EIGRP, Oh, no, sorry, yeah, Jeremy. For any packet, we'll have the 52 byte header. For what? For the ESP header. You get my point, the header part. Now, can I do something about it? You guys are okay with this so far at this point? This is GRE over IPsec. So now the GRE packet is being treated as data and getting encrypted. The advantage is that the packet is secure. What's the disadvantage? Is that the packet is bigger in size. All right, the header is increased. More overhead. Good. Now I can make it a little better over here. I can at least to some level of 
efficiency on it, making it a little bit more efficient. Not the best, but at least I can do something about it. You guys ready for that? Any questions at this point before I move on to that? Let's have this cleared up and then we'll move to the next thing. Everybody fine with this, right? Just to give you a sample example, because I did it in steps, sample configuration from scratch. If I knew I was gonna do for what? GRE and over IPsec. Any debug command in terms of what? This, not really. The same debug crypto, ISIC app and IPsec that I would do if I wanted to test it. But over here, I've gone even one step further because I've also shown you the actual packet, the uh, Wireshark part of it. Now, sample configuration from scratch. How much is total header, including GRE and IPsec? I would say roughly around 76 to 80 bytes. That's just the header. GRE ESP header is about 76 to 80 bytes. All right, what does a sample configuration look like from scratch? If I knew from, from the offset that I'm gonna be doing what? GRE IPsec, what would I do? Because I'm doing IPsec, I would start with what? This config, I'll just do it without the extra bit of information that I write. IPsecamp policy 10, auth free share, encryption, triple des, Hash is MD5. I'm just picking some parameters. You can pick your own. Let's say I'm doing it from R1 towards R3. Okay. Getting there, Daniel. That's my next thing. Good so far, guys, this is what I've done. This is GRE over IPsec from scratch. Correct. And there's no ACL. Questions about this or you guys are okay with this? All right, now, what did, I, what did I show you the packet as? This was your EIGRP packet, right? What do you guys see over here in the packet? Don't you see a duplication over here, exact same packet? Let me, Explain that, that a bit over here. In IPsec, the way it works by default is it takes the packet that's coming in that will be treated as data for IPsec, it treats the entire packet coming in without any intelligence, takes it as data and slaps a new header on it. 
This is the default behavior of what? IPsec. This is the default behavior of what? IPsec. This behavior is known as the tunnel mode. If you don't configure any mode, this is the default IPsec behavior or mode called the tunnel mode, where it takes the data as is, slaps the new header on it. This is treated as pure data, and this is your header. Without any intelligence that does this, this is known as the tunnel mode. And you guys can see it in two different places. Let me show you that. If you take a look at your config on your router, show run. I'll do a section crypto. When I type in the transform set, you will notice, okay, this is an older iOS. It doesn't show you the command. But in the newer iOSs, it will show you mode tunnel. If I do a, let me just do it on another router that I have, which is a newer iOS. This is a new other router with a different iOS. This iOS is 15.5. The other one is an older one, right? If I did a crypto transform set over here, See this? It tells you mode tunnel. Even here in this guy, although it doesn't show you that it's mode tunnel, it is set to tunnel. The default mode is tunnel. The other place that you can check is show crypto IPsec SA. Over here, it'll tell you that it's tunnel. Okay, but in the newer iOSs, even in your running config, you'll see the mode tunnel. In the older iOS, you won't see it in the running config, but it's there. Where was it? Let's do it again. Although it's not showing up, it is the default. See, under the transform set, it doesn't show it, but it's a default, as you guys can see. Over here, it is using what mode? The tunnel mode. What does the tunnel mode do? Takes the packet and treats the entire inside as data without any intelligence, takes it and encapsulates it. Everybody okay with that? Good so far? What, it, what is this mode called? This is the default mode called the tunnel mode. All right? Now, if you know that you are going to have a duplication, like I have over here, I can tell my router, hey, listen, you know what? Check the inside header. If it matches, if you're running GRE inside, strip the duplication part. Skip the duplication part. This is known as the transport mode. What happens in transport mode? IPsec will check the inner header. If the inner header is the same as the outer header, it will eliminate the inner header. This will strip of 16 bytes of duplicate header information. What is this mode called? The transport mode. Now, the thing that you need to understand is just because I put the transport mode on, 
in my crypto IPsec transform set does not necessarily mean it is going to do that. It is intelligent. It will check whether there's duplication or not. If there's no duplication, it's going to fall back to what mode? Tunnel. So if you've done transport and there's no duplication, it'll go back to tunnel. You understand that? So there is intelligence in the in the protocol to check. Oh, there's no trans. I don't know why he's doing uh, transport mode because the inner header and the outer header are different. For example, if I was doing a normal IPsec, what was a normal IPsec going to look like? Remember yesterday, let's say I was doing a ping with an ICMP packet of 10.1 going to 10.3. The outer header would immediately be what? ESP, which would be the public addresses. Right? So in this case, these two are what? Different. So if they're different and you had said mode what? Transport, what is it going to do? Said, so, no, nah, no, nah, no, nah, this is wrong. This should be what? Tunnel. So you have configured transport, it will still fall back to what? Tunnel. Because IPsec is intelli intelligent enough to see that there is no duplication over here. Understood? So transport is done when you have a duplication. If it's not there, it is going to revert back to what? Tunnel. Although you have the command in there, it'll still be defaulting to what? Tunnel. Can I do transport mode over here? Do I have the ability to do transport over here? Because my inside and my outside headers are the same. Yeah? Okay, how do I do it then? In my crypto IPsec transform set, when I created it, I can set the mode to transport. If I don't do it, what's the default? The default, as you guys saw, was tunnel. So let's do that over here to see the difference. So I'm on R3. No, that's not true. It's just the, the duplication of the header to make it more efficient. Now, although I've done it, I need to clear my tunnels for it to kick in. Showing you transport, my tunnel should be up. Yep, it's up. Show crypto, IPsec, SA. Take a look now. What mode am I in now? It's not just because I configured mode transport. It also is because I actually need and I'm, I'm using transport. You understand that? So just because I did more transport in that previous example that we did yesterday, it would revert back to tunnel because it understands this is not right. Understood, guys? And based on this, what did I tell you? What would the packet look like over here, guys? Once I do this, this is going to be in transport mode. How many bytes did I tell you it shaves off? 16. So this should be about what? 134 bytes. The duplication that happened over here is shaved off. So this is what it looks like. ESP, outer header. It still has, it's still a GRE-based packet, but the duplication of the IP header is not there. So it's ESP, GRE, IPsec, but the 16 bytes of the IP header are gone. Can I verify that? Take a look. Remember that 150, 150 that was propagating for the IGRP packet? 
I can't show you the packet because that packet is encrypted, but I can show you based on the size that the 16 bytes have been shaved up. Everybody good with this? So you guys understand the difference between tunnel and transport? Tunnel takes the packet as is and slaps a new ESP header on it. Transport checks if there's any duplication, gets rid of the duplication, making it a little bit more efficient in terms of what? Packet size. Good so far, guys. So now my header for ESP, which had jumped from what, 98 bytes to what, 150, which was a total of 52 bytes extra with IPsec. Now I've cut it down to what? 134 or 16 bytes less, so it's only 36 bytes extra for ESP. That was with what? But you'll notice that this packet, this tunnel is still a GRE tunnel. Let me show you that as well. Show interface tunnel one. What is the tunnel protocol over here? Still GRE. Yes, it is getting encrypted based on what? IPsec, but the actual protocol is still GRE. So this is ESP and then you'll have the GRE header and inside GRE you will have the EHRP. Everybody okay with that? This is GRE over IPsec. Now let me ask you this now. Why did I have to go to GRE? What made me go to GRE? To be able to do routing, right? Why, can't, why could I not do it with IPsec, what I did yesterday? No direct connection, right? It, it did not have a tunnel interface. IPsec doesn't support multicast. I'll show you it does. The reason I could not do routing yesterday because the two were not connected to each other. So what did I do today specifically that allowed me to do routing? Help me out with that. What allowed me to do routing today? Was it GRE or was it the logical interface? MGRE I haven't done Rinish yet because that's multi-point GRE. I'm just doing point to point right now. It was a logical interface, the tunnel. Is tunnel GRE? Or let me rephrase it. Is tunnel only GRE? That's just the default, right? Can I run the tunnel interface as an IPsec tunnel? native IPsec without running GRE on it. Just run it as an IPsec panel. Or does it have to be GRE? That's where you're wrong. Can I phone a friend? <laughs> yeah, you can call me. The initial tunnel protocol, when it came out, the only protocol that you could run on the tunnel interface 
was GRE. That is about 15 years ago. What did they do at that time? He said, well, why don't I go into the GRE tunnel or sorry, in the tunnel interface and run other protocols? And one such protocol that you can run on the tunnel interface is IPsec. Absolutely correct, Mo. So the reason behind me not being able to run routing protocol is not that IPsec did not support multicast. It was because that two routers were not directly connected to each other. Once I got the tunnel up, yes, initially the tunnel interface, the protocol that was there, the only protocol that was there initially was what? GRE. And when you read the documentation, that's what you read. But that's all documentation. Yes, this is the default protocol. Now, default means it can be changed. I can change it to what? IPsec, so I'm no longer running GRE. This tunnel can be a pure IPsec tunnel. Running what? Routing on it. And by doing that, nope, I don't need GRE anymore. By doing that, I need a tunnel, not GRE. I will get rid of what? This header. So what I can do over here is, this is called Change the mode, it's called the mode. This is called tunnel-based IPsec or known as static virtual tunnel interface. Allows you to run IPsec natively on the tunnel interface without GRE. How do I do it? Very simple. Remember when I went into the tunnel? There is a command called tunnel mode. Set it to IPsec. Because you can do it for IPv4 as well, or for IPv6 as well. That's why the qualification is there. By doing that, what will happen to this packet over here? it will eliminate this GRE header over here. That is eight bytes, by the way. So this will come to 126. So eight bytes will be taken off. What eight bytes? The GRE header pipe part. I wanna show you a before and after, a couple of things. Number one, when I do show tunnel, interface tunnel one, what is the protocol over here? GRE, okay. The other thing that I want to show you is the Wireshark. What's the size of the packet, the yellow packet? One thirty-four. Now, what I'm going to do over here is I am going to go onto my routers, tunnel one, tunnel mode, IPsec, IPv4. Tunnel 3, tunnel mode, IPsec, IPv4. Now it does, it's not going to be transport, is it? Tell me, when you look at this packet header over here, what, even if I have set up my mode as what? Transport, is this going to be a transport packet? Transport means what? Inside and outside header are the same. No duplicate, so it's going to revert back to what? 
Remember, I told you it's intelligent, so it will have the intelligence to go back to tunnel mode. But before that, do you guys see this? This is what the packet is going to look like now. So let's see if it's up. Looks like it came back up. So go back over here. Remember this? Channel protocol is what? Absolutely, yeah. What is the protocol now? IPsec. So it's native IPsec running multicast routing protocol over here. There's no GRE anymore. We'll talk about DVTI later on. We'll do that in flex. For this, for right now, it's SVTI static. DVTI, I don't have the destination. I'll figure out the destination. We'll do that as well. Good. The other thing I want to show you guys, so you guys see this, right? And all my routing, everything is working properly. See, I'm still learning EIGRP through the tunnel. We don't. But you learned a new thing right now, right? So you don't do GREIP sec, like you just do SVTI. The other thing I wanted to show you guys is this. That eight bytes that I was talking about. Correct. You went through a history lesson as well. Absolutely, man. Now, the other thing that I also talked about was the intelligence. What's my mode? Take a look at your command. Although I put my command as what? Mode transport. You see that it is not doing transport, it's doing what? Tunnel. Why? There's no duplication. So it's intelligent enough. When there's no duplication, it automatically reverses back to town, yeah. So it's intelligent to go back and says, this guy doesn't know what he's doing, let me fix it for him. So from this point on, don't do GRE IPsec, do native IPsec. You don't need to worry about tunnel, transport, none of that, and the packet is smaller. Smaller than GRE IP set. Everybody good with this? Now you can. <laughs> Good. Let's take a break right now. We'll come back. We'll review this again if you have any questions. We'll take a look at those questions. And once we're done with that, we'll go into MGRE. Take a break. Take a look at it. If you have any questions, I'll be more than happy to answer them when we come back.
Hey guys, yeah, the all the notes, the diagrams that I've been doing, they will be made available to you guys through uh, Router Gods. So keep an eye open. I I will share that with Katie, and it'll she makes it available for you guys. All right. So again, like I did with the sample configuration over here for GRE over IPsec. Personally, I would not do that anymore because I don't need to run GRE IPsec. What would I do instead? Oops, sorry. One sec. So this is your sample config for native IPsec tunnel or tunnel based. Okay, so same thing, same thing. Everything is the same. The only difference is over here, I also do what? Tunnel mode, IPsec, IPv4. The rest is basically the same. So remember earlier on, somebody was asking about multicast with IPsec and all that. That is, again, old story. You can run multicast, as you guys can see, I'm running multicast over here, over an IPsec tunnel. There's no GRE over there whatsoever. Questions, guys? Any questions about the stuff over here? So in the future, if you're doing a router to router uh, VPN, my personal suggestion is to do SVTI. So why transport still come in mode with IPsec? Maybe there's a router that does not support, uh, what do you call it? The uh, native IPsec tunnel interface. It depends on the speed that you're running. Generally, voice traffic does not like to have any type of delay in it. With IPsec, you're encrypting it. So you need to have good speeds to be able to counter that. All right? At least your, answer, uh, your question is answered in terms of why do I have it? Because I still need to have backward compatibility with devices that don't support IP, native IPsec tunnels. So in that case, I would need to run GRE and that, that's where mode transport comes in. Not only that, the next thing I'm gonna show you guys over here is MGRE, multi-point GRE, which has its own advantages that you have to run GRE. So in that case, mode transport is still there. Good, everybody, you guys understand this so far. Now, the next thing I wanna talk about is the other disadvantage that I have over here. This one, although it's dynamic in nature, but scalability still takes a hit. Actually, now I can stop this, I don't need this anymore. And save this. I can bring my second diagram up now. Let's say I have a company that has multiple sites. Okay. It has a site over here in Los Angeles. Let's say this site over here is in New York. This is Rome. Sydney, and Dubai. I have five sites in this company. If I do SVTI or GREIPSEC, either way, both of them only support point-to-point -point circuits. Single source, 
single destination. So if I wanted to connect these five sites to each other, I end up creating how many tunnels? A separate tunnel to connect Los Angeles to New York, because this is the internet. Separate tunnel to connect Los Angeles to Rome, to Sydney, to Dubai. I'm not done. I need a separate tunnel for what? New York to Rome, New York to Dubai, New York to Sydney. Okay. Then similarly, I need Rome to Sydney, Rome to Dubai, and I would need Dubai and Sydney as well. N times N minus one divided by two is the number of tunnels on each router. So I have five sites, N times N minus one, which is times four, which is 10, divided by two. Right? So that's the number of tunnels that I need. As the number increases, the number of tunnels also increases. So yes, GRE, IPsec, or for that matter, the SVTI configuration that I showed you, both of them are dynamic in nature. But what do they lack? Scalability. Scalability means size. Yes, they're dynamic, but they're not scalable. Both of them. Understood? And that's where the need comes in for a tunnel. That's a single tunnel but with multiple points on it, which is called a multi-point tunnel. And in terms of this, only GRE provides that capability. So my reliance on GRE comes in when I need to have a more scalable of a setup. So if I'm doing point to point, I would do SVTI. But if I'm doing multi-point, I don't have a choice but to run what? GRE, but it's not the normal GRE, it's what? MGRE. Multi-point GRE. Understand? And how does that work? Rather than creating separate tunnels, not necessarily hub and spoke. We'll talk about that, how it works. It can be, it generally is spoke to spoke. The advantage of doing MGRE is generally you want to have it spoke to spoke so that you don't have to go through a bottleneck to reach another site. So what I do in this case is I set up a single logical tunnel. Let's do a before. Let's say I was doing it before, I would have a separate tunnel from R1 to R2. Let's say this network over here is, let's call it 12.0. I would have a separate tunnel over here. Let's say 13.0. Separate one over here, 14.0 and 15.0, right? I'm not done yet. Then I would set up the tunnels from where? This guy, each one would have its own separate network. Let's say this is 23 on the tunnel I'm talking about, 25, and this would be 24, so on and so forth. You guys get that point? So I have multiple networks over here, multiple separate tunnels. When I do MGRE, I set up a single tunnel where each one of them is connected to the same tunnel. So one network, which has multiple points on it, dot one, dot two, dot three, dot four, dot five. Good so far? 
So how many tunnels on Los Angeles for connecting all the five sites to each other or six or seven or eight? Just a single tunnel. But normally speaking, when I create the tunnel, help me out. If I was doing a tunnel like this, how would I create it? IP address. Tunnel source. I'll just make it easy on myself. I'll say E0 slash zero. And tunnel destination. What's my destination if I was doing this? Single destination, right? Anything that goes over this tunnel will go over to this guy. But over here, I have multiple destinations, right? Can this work? The problem with this is when I say, well, I even if I change the mode, will this work? Think about it. If I type in thing 192.168, yeah, but then I would go into what? Multiple tunnel interfaces, a point to point tunnel. 192.168.1.2, where would it send the packet to? Would it send it to this public, this public, or that public? Before I was doing it based on the network. Now all of them are on the same destination, on the same network, different destinations. So if my inner header is this, what should my outer header be? Source I can understand, I have a single source, but what's the destination? If this is my inner destination, what is my outer destination gonna be? What do I put over here? Should I put two, three, or four? So I cannot do it like this. I need another protocol, which is known as next hop resolution protocol. A function of next hop resolution protocol for each one of those devices. What I'm going to say is if I want to reach 192.168, 1 1.2, its destination, the public address should be 20.2. If I want to reach 1.3, my destination, the public destination should be 30.3. Because on the same network, same tunnel, I have multiple what? Points. So for every point, I need to do what is known as a mapping. No, this is not DMVPN. This is just MGRE, multi-point GRE. We'll get into dynamic multi-point VPN later on. This is just MGRE. You guys get the gist of it? So what's my objective over here? I wanna connect Los Angeles, New York, Rome, Sydney, and Dubai into a single multi-point network. Uh, more than ARP, it would be more like uh, if you look, uh, if you know frame relay in frame relay it's a single multi point network where i do a mapping to reach this network i use this particular dlc if i want to go over here this is my dlc so it's a mapping of a a particular address that i want to reach and it's local mapping. The only difference over here, it's not doing a layer two to layer three mapping, it's doing IP to IP mapping. From the private to its corresponding public.
Good. So let's set this up. Let's see how to set this up over here. My objective, connect Los Angeles, New York, Rome, Sydney, and Dubai into a single network. Let me show you the topology over here. I'll open up my topology. You guys can see over here in the diagram. But what is on these routers, I'll show you one second. Okay, R6 is my internet router. It doesn't have anything, just basic IPs. These are public IPs, 10.6, 20.6, 30.6, 40.6, 50.6. Got it? I go to router one. Show IP interface brief. I have 10.1, that's my public IP over here, 10.1. If I look at my routing table, I will have a default gateway pointing to 10.6. This 10.1 is my internal network. Good so far? Router two. The public side is on the 20 network. My address is 20.2. This is my internal network. And I do have a default gateway pointing towards 20.6, which is acting as my ISP. Now, can I go from router one to router two or router two to router one? Absolutely, the public address should be reachable on the public side. R3, same thing. I should be able to reach 10.1 .1 on the public side. LA is pingable, so is New York based on the public side of things, right? Should be able to ping 10.1 public, public, and the public for room. And the last router, router five, it should be 50.5. Should be able to ping LA, New York, Rome and Sydney. Everybody okay with that? So everybody is communicating where? On the internet at this time. But I want to connect them up on a private network so I can run routing between what? One, two, three, four, and five. Good so far? So remember how I created the tunnel? Let's start creating the tunnel on R1. How did I create the tunnel over here? I want to be part of an address. This is going to be my tunnel IP. This 192.168.1 network is the common network that everyone will belong to in terms of what? The private network, the tunnel network. Good so far, guys? Now, tunnel source. What's my tunnel source in LA? Right? Or I can just simply say what? Pick it up from E00, whatever the address is. It's 10.1 in my case. Now, rather than saying tunnel destination, because then I can only put in one destination, I'm going to change the mode because I want multiple destinations to what? A multi-point GRE means what now? As soon as I say mode GRE multi-point, now I'm required to run mapping. What protocol does the mapping for me? What's the protocol that will do mapping for me? NHRP. How do I set that up? How do I set up NHRP so I can connect up these five sites to each other? First thing, enable NHRP. 
This is how you enable it. IP, NHRP, network ID, and give it a number. Any number from one to four billion, pick a number. Locally significant, like RAT OSP at one. What this does, it enables NHRP on that interface. Good so far. Now, I will need to put in a mapping for every one of the remote sites. How many remote sites does LA have? I have four remote sites, correct? New York, Rome, Sydney, and Dubai. Okay. How do I do the mapping? IP, NHRP, map. 192, 168, 1 1.2. If this is the address that I want to reach, the public address for that guy is 20.2. If I want to reach 1.3, which I'm planning on assigning to Rome, this is his public IP. If I want to reach Sydney, the public IP for Sydney is this guy. If I want to reach Dubai, this is the public IP. If you take a look at your interface right now, this is what it looks like. This is my panel IP. This is my public source destination. If I want to go over here, if I ping 192.168.1.2, I'm going to replace the outside header with 20.2 or insert the outside header as 20.2. Do you get my point? Let's put this in where? In your notepad. The Tunneling, tunnel mechanisms discussed above are all point to point mechanisms. If you have a sizable network with a bunch of what sites the above solutions will not be as I should say put it the other way around the above solution is not scalable for a requirement of a lot of sites. Okay? Why they're point to point? If you want a scalable solution, you need to use multi-point tunnel interfaces. The only one that supports that at this time is GRE. So going back to GRE now for multi-point. This mode is known as multi-point or multi-point GRE or MGRE, okay? MGRE requires mappings for the multiple points on the tunnel interface This is accomplished by what? 
by a protocol known as next hop resolution protocol or NHRP. So let's do that now. Configuration. And as I'm doing the configuration, I'll also give you descriptions of each command. R1, it said was Los Angeles. Interface tunnel one. IP address 192.168.1.1. And what I'll do over here is I'll give you a description. The common tunnel IP shared by all the sites. Good. Tunnel source. The public IP of the, the device. Used in the communications or the outer source address. You don't do tunnel destination anymore. What do you do? The mode needs to change from the default. GRE point to point to what? GRE or multi point GRE. The default mode on a tunnel is what? Point to point GRE. I need to change it to what? Multi point GRE. Now, NHRP comes in. The first NHRP command that you would type in is the network ID. Turns on NHRP on the interface. The network ID is locally significant. Can be any number. Doesn't need to match. Good, like router OSP at one. Good so far guys, everybody okay with this? What's next? The mapping. In order to reach 192.168.1.2, the outer header will be 20.2. If the inner header destination is Use you guys understand that? I know that one ninety two one sixty eight one dot two has been assigned to whom? New York. What is the IP public IP for New York is twenty dot two. And similarly, I'll do what? And here I'll do three, four, and five. This will be three, four, five. What is it? Sorry, two, three, four, and five. Two, three, four, and five. There you go. Good. Now, what do I do on New York? This is for your notes, so New York, I'm going to do this. Final source, I can still keep it as this. 
tunnel mode GRE multi point IP and HRP network ID, whatever you want to call it. One to reach one is 10.1. Two is myself, so I'll do three, four, and five. This is 30, 40, and 50. And this is 30, three, four, and five. This is my configuration where? On New York. One second. I don't know what happened over here. This one is not nice. Okay, there you go. All right, so over here on router two, I'm gonna paste this. Router two, the tunnel is up. Did I get router one up? Yeah. So router one has a tunnel IP of one, the one, and a mapping for two, three, four, and five. It is mandatory because it brings it up. It enables NHRP on the interface. It enables it. So now I should be able to ping 192.168, 1 1.1. Let me show you what happens when I ping it. I need to have a couple of show commands over here that should be up. So that I can explain to you what happens. And the third one that I need is this. Okay. When I type in, Ping 192, 168, 1 1.1. I'm sitting on R2. Just like previously when I talked about what? The tunnel interfaces, it goes to the routing table first. What does it check in the routing table? How do I reach 192, 168, 1 1.1, whatever? What does it say? It's directly connected. So I'm on the same network as what? The destination. Which interface is it? Tunnel one, right? So if it's tunnel one, it checks the IP address of the tunnel. What is it? 192.168.1.2. So it creates a packet. How does it create the packet? This is the inside header. We'll run routing protocols as well over here. Yes, it does have an issue, and I'll explain what that issue is. So this is what I was pinging, and this is what the packet looks like. Uh, no, not really, not that issue. There's a different issue with this. Tomorrow I'll show you that. OSPF treats this network as point to point. It doesn't treat it as non broadcast. And this is multi point. So, on a point to point, you can only have one neighbor. Here, I'll have multiple neighbors. That's the issue, but I'll explain that. Bill. So, this, is, this has been done based on what? Checked it, local connected network of tunnel one, and this is my source, and I'm pinging this. What's next? Yeah, I'll, we'll do that as well. We will do that. Focus on this for right now. We'll do the OSPF tomorrow. So this part is done. Now comes the point of creating the outer header. Outer header. What's the source?
this guy puts it over here what's the destination guys for this before when i was doing it as a point to point on this i had a tunnel source and a destination so i would put the destination immediately but now i have multiple points on it so i cannot i don't have a single destination and if you take a look at it over here under the tunnel take a look at what it says Tunnel protocol is what? Multi-point GRE. I'm on two over here. Right? Now I need to go to one, but I don't know that over here, but it tells me that it's multi-point GRE. As soon as it tells me multi-point GRE, it knows to check the what is known as the NHRP mapping table where is that i had created that and what does it look for over there this address is it there yep what is it pointing to this address so the purpose of the mapping is to map over what? The inner header destination to the outer header destination. You get my point? So you understand what the mapping is for? So whenever I do a mapping, I need a mapping for whatever this guy is, so I can put or fill in the outer header. And can be different. So right now, if I now go ahead and do that ping, it will work. Okay. Now, how do I do the other sites? This was Rome, I believe. Free. This one, I really don't care. As long as it's enabled, it doesn't matter what the number is. I need a mapping for one. I need a mapping for two, four, and five. Copy it. Go to router three. Paste it. What am I checking over here to see if everything's fine or not? Try P route. I should have a connected route right now through the tunnel. Show interface tunnel one. It should tell me that it's MGRE. It should have a source, my public address, and what else? My mapping. And all these mappings, because I manually created them, are called static mappings. So right now, I should be able to ping one and two so new york as well as los angeles is pingable my fourth one sydney Four. One, two is good. I don't need four. I'm myself. So three and five. Again, 
show IP route should have the 192.168.1.0 network, the same network. Show interface tunnel one, my public address 40.4, it's picked it up. It has MGRE as a protocol. So I need mappings. So if everything's fine, I should be able to ping one, two, and three. So now I have reachability over there. Good. And the last one. Dubai. This is five. Let's pick on one and two and three and four. Clear guys, everybody okay with that? But would you want to do this? Yes, it solved one issue. Yeah, we can do it in either GNS or IOU. It solved one issue. That it is now a single network with multiple what? Points on it. But is it scalable? I need to go to each and every site and create a mapping for the other sites, don't I? If I had 20 sites around the world, on every router, I would need to have how many of these? 19 mappings. Yeah, I don't have multiple tunnels. but I still have a single tunnel with a whole bunch of config on it. And God forbid somebody's IP address changes. Guess what? I would need to change that IP address on all the other sites. So MGRE does give you a foundation to get around the problem, but it is not the actual solution. It's a step towards a solution. Because when you do MGRE by itself, that basically means all your mappings that you need to do have to be done statically by itself. And that's where a mechanism comes in which allows us to do dynamic mappings. In this type of setup, I'll set up one server, which is called the mapping server. Also known as the next top server. NHS. I'll have all the other sites, let's say router two, router three, Route of four, route of five. I will only do one mapping on these guys in which I'll point the mapping towards this next top server. So as soon as they come up, they will register themselves and do the mapping on the next top server dynamically. So the next top server dynamically will learn about the public to private IP mappings of all the different clients. These are your clients. Okay, so as soon as they come up, whatever their public IP is and their corresponding tunnel IP, they will register with whom? The next top server. So for example, in this type of setup, what's gonna happen over here? I'll do one mapping on New York. What's the one mapping? 
I'll tell it that its next top server is 192.168.1.1 LA. And I'll tell it in order to reach 192.168.1.1, the public IP is 10.1. And I'll replicate this mapping where? In Rome, Sydney, and Dubai. Because I've configured New York, Rome, Sydney, and Dubai with an IP address of a next top server that automatically tells that router as soon as the tunnel interface comes up, tunnel up, go register. Register what? Go to the next top server, tell it what your public to private mapping is. So on Los Angeles, I don't have any mappings. It will get all the mappings dynamically as the tunnels come up. So as soon as the tunnel comes up, what does it do? It will register for, with LA saying what? My IP, my tunnel IP is 192.168.1.2 and my public IP is 20.2. My public IP is 1.3. Sorry, my tunnel IP is this. My public IP is that. Whatever it is. You guys understand that? So now LA has all the mappings. For whom? For New York, Rome, Sydney, as well as Dubai. Everybody okay with that? Yeah? Now, let's say, coming back to somebody asked me that question, is it hub and spoke? Let's say New York wants to go to Rome. He typed in ping 192.168.1.3. Does he have a mapping for 192.168.1.3 over here? It doesn't. It only has one mapping, right? So it's going to send in a resolution request. Who is 192.168.1.3? Does he know? Does LA know? Yes, because it registered over here. He's going to send him a uh, response saying, hey, listen, you know what? If you want to reach 192.168.1.3, go to 30.3. It receives that. It puts it into its NHRP cache. This was done using a dynamic resolution says, thank you very much. The data packet goes this way. So yes, I did go to LA once to do what? Resolve it. But once it's resolved, I'll go direct. Everybody okay with that? So I'm not doing hub and spoke. No LA entries are not static. How did I learn the LA entries? Because I configured the New York router, the Rome router, the uh, Sydney router, as well as the Dubai router with the NHS command. See this star? The star is these two commands. Because I've configured all these routers with the NHS command, as soon as a tunnel comes up, they will automatically go and register themselves dynamically to LA. So all these entries are also dynamic. Which mapping, the dynamic one or the static one? The dynamic ones, by default, have a timer, like a lifetime, of 7,200 seconds, which is two hours. So for two hours, I don't need to go back and figure that out. But after two hours, I'll send that one resolution packet back, just like your DNS cache. You know what DNS does? It resolves what? A domain name to an IP? And it just does the same thing. It's just not doing it for what? Domain name to IP is doing it for what? Public to private IP. 
Remember somebody asked me, what, what should you compare it with? Somebody said not, somebody said something else. If you want to compare it with something, it's very similar to the way that DNS works. The only difference is DNS is re resolving what? Domain name to its public IP, whereas NHS is uh, uh, resolving what? The tunnel IP to the public IP. There, everybody? So which one would you want to use, MGRE or DMVP? And this, by the way, this dynamic setup of the mappings is known as dynamic multipoint VPN. I showed you how to set up MGRE over here. This is MGRE. Where I have a whole bunch of mappings where? Everywhere. Tomorrow, I'm going to show you this part. I'm actually going to configure DMVPN for you. This to me is the most scalable VPN. It is based on MGRE, but it is not just MGRE, it is in conjunction with NHRP in a dynamic manner. Very important class tomorrow. If you guys have not done DMVPN, definitely something not to be missed. That is tomorrow though. Good everybody. Now, somebody was asking me about OSPF just to make sure you understand that. In OSPF, I can, once I set this up and I wanna run routing with OSPF, the problem with OSPF is the network type. In OSPF, it's the only protocol that works differently on different type of interfaces. When OSPF sees that it's a tunnel interface, OSPF will treat this interface as a point-to-point -point interface. Point-to-point -point interfaces in OSPF can only have one neighbor. But if it's a multi-point network where I have router one, router two, router three, as soon as it receives another hello packet from another neighbor on the same interface, it breaks the neighbor relation with the first one, goes to the second one. Then it receives a hello from here, it breaks the previous one, goes to the new one. So you'll have constant flapping of neighbors by default in OSPM. I think, Bill, you have that question. So by default, when you run OSPF on a MGRE interface, it will not run. It will actually flap. Now the solution to that is to change the network type from what? Point to point that only allows one neighbor to either point to multi-point or broadcast. And I'll explain the pros and cons of each one. When should you do point to multi-point and when should you do broadcast? There are reasons for doing each one. Absolutely, that will set your appropriate phase for you. What if your site with NHS goes down, whole uh, DMVPN will be down or on other remaining sites? Absolutely correct. If you have a single, what do you call it? NHS, that's exactly what's gonna happen, but that's why I have this over here.
No, your control plane and your data plane will go because control plane, your routing will go. There won't be any route in your routing table. So that's why you have redundancy. We'll do a dual hub as well. Still a lot of good stuff coming up. <laughs> Any other questions, guys? Thank you, Pat. So tomorrow, my plan is to do DMVPN, only DMVPN, but complete DMVPN with everything that is there to be done. My topology for tomorrow is this one. We can run EHRP and OSPF, the two protocols. So you guys okay with GR IPsec and the, the multicast over IPsec? You guys okay with that? Tunnel mode, transport mode, everything good? I see a lot of confusion with those type of terminologies. It's not very well explained in the books. All right, in that case, see you guys tomorrow. Thank you guys, good night.